Welcome back. If you guys watched my last video on the Giordano Intrepid, you'll know that this is a budget bike that runs $654 and is sold at Walmart. This bike packs a pretty big punch for the price point that it's at, and it's a bike that could actually be ridden out on most trails is pretty impressive. So what I want to do today is I want to give you guys a detailed rundown of exactly how well this bike is put together by the manufacturer. And also I want to weigh each individual part. That way you'll know exactly which parts you're going to want to upgrade and which ones you should probably just leave on the bike. Let's go ahead and let's get to it. To this point on the dismantling of this bike i am really impressed so far with the build quality from the factory once i got to the crank set that's where things got a little bit different but really not that bad the bolts that hold on the crank arm were put on nicely not over tight but the crank arms were on there super tight and that's just simply because there's a lack of grease on the square taper bottom bracket there wasn't any grease on the actual square taper part and there also wasn't any grease on the metal threads. Whenever I'm assembling anything on a bike, whenever there's any metal to metal contact, I always put on just some regular old grease to make sure that that doesn't seize up on me in the future. As you can see here, I'm pulling out the housing that is internally routed through the down tube. This is for the shifting cable. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to remove the hydraulic brakes for the back brake. Fortunately, there were no surprises when taking off all the components to the handlebars. The only surprise that I had was with the handlebars. The paint seems a little bit thin on this. Now taking the headset and the fork off was easy peasy. These things were not bolted on too tight. They seem to be torqued down properly. Now there was a good amount of grease on these. Wasn't overly greased, wasn't underly greased. I usually put a little bit more than what the factory put on here, but seeing some on there is definitely a good sign. The kickstand's coming off anyways, but the bolts on that, funny enough, were wobbly. Now there is one thing that I was concerned about for safety reasons, and we'll get to that here in just a little bit whenever I go to reassemble this bike. I didn't spot it until that particular time. But let's go ahead and let's weigh each part. That way you guys can know all the way down to every detail of this bike and know exactly what you want to keep and what you want to replace. So the crank set and bottom bracket came in at two pounds, 5.6 ounces or 1,065 grams. The cassette came in at one pound, 5.5 ounces or 609 grams. The pedals came out to be 13.5 ounces or 382 grams. The stem and all of its components came out to be 5.3 ounces or 150 grams. The grips are 4.4 ounces or 124 grams. So I had to elevate the handlebars a little bit to get them to not touch anything, but I zeroed it out and it came out to be 12.2 ounces or 345 grams. The rear quick release came out to be 2.1 ounces or 59 grams. The rear derailleur came out to be exactly 10 ounces and 283 grams. The chain and the master links came out to be 9.7 ounces or 274 grams. The seat came in at 11.5 ounces or 326 grams. So the seat post clamp came in at 1.3 ounces or 36 grams. The dork disc and the reflectors came in at 4.1 ounces or 116 grams. So if you take those off your bike, you're almost gonna be saving the same weight that the grips actually put onto your bike. So not a bad weight savings for something that most people take off their bike. Now we're gonna switch over to my hanging scale and it does weigh things a little bit differently. It doesn't show us the ounces whenever we're weighing in pounds, but we're gonna start with the seat post and it came in at 0.89 of a pound or 403 grams. The shifter with the cable housing and the cable came in at 0.47 of a pound or 213 grams. The front brakes came in at 0.71 pounds and 322 grams. Since I couldn't get the rear brakes off, I went ahead and estimated it at 0.86 pounds at 380 grams. 
The fork was actually really surprising how heavy it was at 7.44 pounds or 3,374 grams. Now I'm gonna go ahead and subtract out the weight of the rear brake that is included on what you're seeing on the screen here on the scale. I came up with a subtracted weight of 4.8 pounds or 2,200 grams for a total frame weight. The front wheel came in at 2.37 pounds or 1,047 grams. The rear wheel came in at 2.91 pounds or 1,319 grams. The rear rotor came in at 0.28 of a pound and 127 grams. Now the front rotor came in at 0.32 of a pound or 145 grams. Weighing both of the tires, they came in a little bit different. The first one came in at 1.99 pounds or 902 grams. The second tire came in at 2.08 pounds or 943 grams. The tubes combined together came in at 1.39 pounds or 630 grams. Last and definitely the least important on this bike is the kickstand. It came in at 0.58 of a pound or 263 grams. That's a quick savings whenever you take that sucker off of over a half a pound. Now that you guys know exactly how much each part is contributing to the total weight of this bike, let's go ahead and reassemble this minus the kickstand and the dork disc. Now, like I had mentioned earlier in the video, there was a part that was very concerning to me for safety reasons, and that is the star nut wasn't properly installed on the fork. And if you guys know anything about the star nut, if this popped out while you were riding, who knows what kind of damage that would cause to you or the bike. So I went ahead and I put my star nut installer on and hammered that sucker down, got it down to the proper depth. This is something that if you guys aren't familiar with how this works, I'll put a video right here and down in the description on how to install a star nut with links to a star nut installer. If you don't feel comfortable doing this yourself, definitely take it to your local bike shop and they'll do it for you. I did pick up my first upgrade to this bike and it is the Crank Brothers Double Shot Dual Sided Pedals. As you guys know if you've watched my channel, I ride Crank Brother pedals on all of my bikes. That is just the ecosystem that I have bought into and I really enjoy them. Now I typically run egg beaters on my mountain bike and I run candies on my road bike. But with these particular pedals they came in at 331 grams which is a 51 gram savings over the other pedals that came with the bike. That's gonna to equate to around a 10th of a pound. Not much, but every little bit counts whenever you're trying to drop some weight from this budget bike. Now that we've got it all put back together, the new pedals put on and the dork disc and reflectors all taken off along with the kickstand, let's see what this thing actually weighs now. 
Looks like it came in right around 34.91 pounds. The old weight was 36.21 pounds. According to my calculations, that's around 1.3 pounds of savings. Now my scales could be off just a little bit, so I'm just gonna say it's around one pound to a pound and a quarter. That's a pretty significant savings considering that most of that was just plastic bits and the kickstand. And that's yeah, the cool right there down a, oh, oh, man. Whoa, this is gonna be a sweet upgrade. I don't think it's gonna work, but man, if it does, it's gonna save some weight.